it felt it feels real like every day. Like I see pictures, I just know like you know where they were at when they were doing that. You know where you know when I first had like a some type of hearing over the phone and I heard like uh, Frank and Sandy and Frankie and them they were on the phone and I forgot what kind of hearing it was something about like a probate hearing or something. I knew exactly where they were in the back. I heard the birds chirp. I knew they were on the back deck and I just like walked back to myself and just bawled my eyes out because I knew exactly where they were. I knew how many times the girls were, were back there and it's just it weird how emotion is processed differently for me than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like something like you said, like you said, like um, if you lost your kids in the grocery store for five seconds, you'd be a, a mess. Mm -hmm. And then like, you know, for me, it'd be like, you know, I'd be, I'd be panicked, but I probably wouldn't cry. I'd be like, like looking around trying to find them, but it's just like, it just processes it different for me. I never knew why. Never know why. I don't want to think I'm like a cold hearted person. It's just a matter of just, just don't show it. Show the emotion as much as other people do. Even when, like, you know, the girls left North Carolina, like, you know, her chance brother and mom and dad were all crying when they left. And it's just kind of like, you know, I never really saw my parents get like that when they left. So it's kind of like, I don't know if it's like you're born that way. Like your family doesn't show emotion like that? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like, you know, my dad couldn't really speak at the sentencing hearing because he said he was kind of like, he, was, he said he was going to lose it. Like, like lose his emotion like that really hit me it's kind of like I never seen him like you know like that like like vulnerable mm -hmm. like nobody's really ever seen me that way either that's why like maybe I just was it ever like you're to see if you're like that or was it just something you don't, I, just never I did just, you know, I never saw my dad cry so maybe it's just something that you know was in, in my brain that maybe I should never cry maybe it's you know. Was your mom like a loving mom, like a doting mom, and you know, would give you affection and hugs yeah. and kisses? And oh yeah, she'd always like ask me like, you know, what was going on. Like she said, I was always hard to read. She never, she never knew what was going on. But did but, she still try and give you affection mm -hmm. even growing up? Yeah, she just, she always. My sister was always a parent. Like it was always like what was going on. She always just like she's always open with me. It was always just you know closed off. And. She always wanted to know what was going on, like how I felt. And I was just like, yeah, okay. That's all I give her. Even if something even if something was wrong, like I would have probably never said anything. Because like I just you know deal with it myself. But I don't know if that just growing up that way just kept me in that way. Deal with things on your own, but then they build up so much that you can't deal with them and they take them take a hold of you you never thought in a way you could take hold of you. Do you think as a result of just bottling up for so long? Definitely. What do you remember your dad saying at sentencing? I remember there was a scripture, it was a 1 John 1 9. And then like a lot of it, the other their representatives said for him. And my, my mom said a lot of, my mom spoke, but everything my dad had written down the, the person said but you know there's you know he always he was talking about him going to little league games and races and stuff like that and going to being my coach and everything like that and so you know, you know I can experience the same type of joy doing that for my girls I remember your mom saying she loves you and she always will yeah. that was pretty important to hear I think at the end she said, I forgive you, son. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was big, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Dad, when we came here today, we were just hoping and praying that you would take your dad's advice. Do you remember what he said? I hope if you ever get a chance to talk, you can talk about it. Okay. And I think that's what today was. Don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was. I didn't expect it to be today. Yeah. So the DA made some comments during that sentencing hearing about your emotions and having no emotions or do you remember all that? Yeah, just like, you know, he lied to us from the start and a couple other things. I believe that's what he was saying. What do you think? Do you 
think he was anywhere close to it? What do you think of, what do you, basically, what is your opinion of what he said in that? Yeah. I mean, it's it's going to be, you know, taking all his evidence and putting it into the story that he, that he wanted to convey. And, like, if you don't know me, that's where you're going to, that's where you're going to portray me. Like, if you take everything from August 13th to now, like, that's how people are going to know. That's how people, that's, there's no other way people are going to opinionate themselves about me just by what they see right there. Right. They're going to say, okay, they look at the guy that did that, did the interviews on the 14th, and they see, okay, that, that guy should be, like, you know, on his hands and knees, like, crying his eyes out, and what's he doing? He's just, like, you know, he's just talking. Right. And they're just, like... Now, I know I maybe got some information maybe from, like, her friend saying, like, he was cheating on her or something like that. He's a cold person. He was, you know, trying to do this and that. It's like, they don't know me. They're, that's always going to be their opinion about me. Because, mm-hmm. like, there was one church service, uh, the only one I've been able to go to in here, and uh, it said you're not defined by one moment in your life. And I think that's, like, people are defining me by one moment in my life. They don't know like what happened before or what can happen later. Okay. So I just hope that, you know, maybe hopefully one day people can start stop judging everybody. Okay. And there's tons of people in here that, you know, I don't even want to know what they did because I don't want to judge them. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like I'm not that person. Like, you know, they know what I did. I'm not going to ask them what they did. You know? Makes sense. You did show some emotion during that hearing. What part did you think you felt most emotional? I think I felt when Frank was talking about, you know, when he, um, I didn't know what what to expect when he first started talking, but you know, he all said I was the evil monster, and that 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 rang in me, and he said I tossed him away like garbage, and that hurt. And you know, when Sandy was talking about that video. About a when Bella was calling me her hero, and that that kind of triggered it a lot there. And then when Frankie was saying, you know, like I'll never be called uncle again, but you'll never be called a dad again. Mm-hmm. That really stung. But, you know, when my parents got up there, just like just hearing my mom and dad talk, you know, just like they really couldn't look at me. That they really couldn't look at me, but I'm just still like, you know. Everything they said, saying they, they forgive me and that you know I'm still their son, no matter what. Yep. It was, I know, like even my attorneys told me, like you need to show a little more emotion because I guess they first time I went to the courtroom, I didn't you know I didn't know what to expect. I was still like new to everything, just in shock about what was going on, and they said I was just a cold person, just looking at. Me. When I was when I did the plea and at the sentencing hearing, it just all all of it felt just more real than anything. I remember growing up, my pastor used to tell me it's better to be one foot out of hell facing heaven than one foot out of heaven facing hell. Mm-hmm. So I think that's you been to hell and now you're facing the right direction definitely I definitely feel like it's I never knew I, don't, I could have a relationship with God like I do now but I just that's like the amazing grace with all of this but I just wish nobody had to pay any kind of price for this I know there's a purpose for everybody I just, just hope that I can keep my mind what well, I think you're seeking peace right that's good it's the only thing you really can do right now is to seek peace and hope pray that everybody can find it too for everybody that was involved, I mean, for, for all of you, and just all your team, and everybody, friends, anybody that was involved. What do you want to happen with this information? I mean, I know you're probably going to tell uh, Frank and Sandy and Frank, you just kind of give them a little closure, right? Yeah, I don't know how much I'm going to tell them. Obviously, you know Sandy better than I. She wants to know everything. Um, but um, I'm going to digest a little bit before I talk to them about it. Um, 
so I don't think there's any rush on that. And then, um, but other than that, I have no intention of talking to anybody outside of law enforcement. But uh, what would you like to see happen with it? I mean, I mean, I'd like to tell my parents, like, you know, when they get here, instead of like finding out anywhere else. Yep. So I know like they've they've been bombarded with information from like you know from the the Amanda girl to the Trent guy to the yeah. from like people going on Inside Edition saying they knew me or went out with me or had like whatever else with me and it's like I don't I don't want them to think that it's like other like false information going out there because like people are getting hold of information like where did they get this information from type deal you know. So. Would you like to see those people charged? People, people take advantage of situations and, you know, they got to, honestly, they'll have to look into themselves and just figure out why they did it themselves. So, I mean, I don't think charging them would, would help. I think they just need to work out their, work out whatever they got going on within themselves. I mean, if... Did you ever have a profile on Tinder or anything like that? Any of those dating port- websites or anything? No. I just had Facebook, I had Instagram. I didn't even know what the WhatsApp thing was called. That's when I was like, John. You never heard of that? No, I was just like, I don't even know what that is, man. This guy's fishing for something. So, sorry you had to waste your time and go out there and talk to him. It was a big time waster. It was a big waste of time. Yeah. But you would not want to be listed as a victim in that case, as far as him being charged with, like, false reporting. I mean, it's, he's, whoever's going to try to get their five minutes, 50 minutes of fame, whatever they want to do with this, I mean, that's, that's on them. I mean, they're, if he's willing to do that, then he just need, he needs, to, he needs to figure out what's going on with himself before, like, you know, I don't, I don't think charging him with something's going to fix that. So it would just be a waste of time, I think. Anything else before we send it away? Um, don't be afraid to ask. <laughs> How things in Colorado now? I mean, since all this has happened, everything's quiet now. Everything's yeah, cool. And- well, we had another guy murder his... Um, fiance, girlfriend, whatever you want to call it. So that's me, the weather news, too. I'm sure you've probably seen that on the news. No. So. Everything here is based. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the only thing here was like that Jamie Kloss thing. I don't know if you heard about that. Oh, yes. We right. were just talking about that out front. That the girl was kidnapped. Yeah. yeah. She escaped after like 90 yeah. days. Yeah. That's crazy. He'll probably come here. Everybody yeah, they here. said he's in some county jail. Is that right? Yeah, Bro, 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 Barron Bro, or something. Bro, 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 Bro. Yeah, so all I see here is like stuff. I try to, it's like everything happened here. So you guys stay tonight there. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, like Do you the, mind if I take a picture of you just to show what you look like now? You just look so different then. I just, you know, like... Uh, it's not going to go on social media okay. or anything. It's just for, like, our own records. Okay. Is that okay? That's fine. That's Were you asking him something? No. Nah. Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say it's like the, the roads in the background are scary enough, you know. Well, I know. They're, when it's snowing, it's mm-hmm. horrendous. Days of ice racing. Actually. Of ice racing? Yeah, but we had spikes on the tires then. So. Oh. <laughs> All right, Chris, we're gonna let you get back to your board. I'm good. Want to uh, finish your drink? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, let me take that back. <laughs> yeah, I had to shave. They, they recommended I change my appearance at the RDC. So. Why is that? Just so people didn't recognize you? No. Yeah, I did. I just shaved it all off. And that razor, like I said, the razor they have here, it's like a, it's a single blade. 
So like I'm like a safety razor, right? Oh, it's it's more than safety. It's just like it's more safety than actually a razor. <laughs> That's why he doesn't shave. <laughs> Like a sharp rock, or <laughs> right? Just, just imagine shaving the same spot for like five minutes, and then finally something starts going. Yeah, it starts to like, like, like warm it up or something. I don't know. You'd probably be better just so. plucking them out with your fingers or something. That'll be warm. You know, everything here is for safety, so like, yeah, I think like once I get moved to GP, I could have something different. So. Oh, that makes sense. Because most of the guys in my unit can't have razors. That's well, right. that makes you feel better, probably. Well, they don't have not. to watch me. Other guys, they stand out. They stand next to them while they shave. So that would be kind of weird. Oh. So, they have any other jobs like if, uh, like fleet? Would you be able to go work fleet maintenance or anything like that? Or I got that... class down to like a minimum. Uh, or like a like a low like a low medium. They have guys that like run across the street to like a records building mm-hmm. and work over there. I don't know, like you know. They said it takes a while to get classed down from, like, maximum to medium. Yeah. So it's, I'm not sure, like, if they've been here. I don't know if they'd ever take me to Colorado or I don't know, I know what they're going to be. Okay. I'm not sure if that happens or not. Yeah. It's all pretty secretive and right up to the minute they do it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. You guys going to do exploring around here? <laughs> so, everything's covered in snow. Yes. <laughs> we were, it's freezing. We were such winds when we walked out. <laughs> Maybe go rent a snowmobile or two. <laughs> yeah, right. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Same with baseball season, but it's not. So, go to yeah. Blue play or something. Oh, NASCAR is back in full snow. I saw the last the last two laps last night when we came out. Oh, did you? No, I went to over like 200 NASCAR races growing up. So yeah, I went to one day 2500. Almost it was one that Mark Martin almost won. I was hoping he would, but he got passed by Kevin Harvick coming out of turn four. I was just oh. yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was a wreck fest. I heard so. Yeah, it's not hard. I didn't get to watch it either. But you went to NASCAR school, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, that was fun. It was. Blast. Yeah. It was like my childhood just reliving it all over again. Right. Just seeing race cars on dynos and doing fabrication welding, all that kind of stuff. It was really cool. Mm-hmm. Not sure if that school's still over there in Mooresville or not, but I'm guessing it still is. So do you have to be escorted back? Is that what they do? Yes. Oh. Yeah, like the unit I'm in, we all have to have escorts because it's a special management unit. So guard escorts you everywhere. Yeah. So what uh, about when you're all playing basketball together? Are the guards watching you? Mm-hmm. There's three of them in there. Do you ever get in fights playing basketball? No, we're just, you know, I mean, we're, you know, guarding each other, like blocking everything like that, but everybody's... We're cool with each other. Good. Yeah, take off. right there. Fly back tonight or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Yeah. Could have flown back tonight, I guess, but I don't know what time the flights are even. It's probably the only time you ever come. My brother went to school there, so. But I had never visited him when he lived there, so that was my first time driving through yesterday. It's a cute little town. Actually, this town's cute. Honestly, like the downtown. It's a pretty cute Mm -hmm. place. It's just so desolate because it's so cold right now. <laughs> I think it was like a couple weeks ago, it was like negative 50 with the wind chill here. Oh. And I said, like, it, the PSU counselor I talked to, she said it hurt to walk in here and breathe. Well, not bad. Yeah, they were saying, like, on the news, like, for people in, like, Chicago and all those places, not to take deep breaths because it was, like, freezing their lungs. Yeah. It was insane. It was like deep, yes. a deep cold from Canada that came through here that just like it froze everything. I mean, it was like it was so cold in our cells. We were just like going out to eat. We were like, just, like shaking like that because it was it, the heat couldn't keep up with that. Yeah, not much heat could do. Plus, this place is old, so like all the windows like were that's, oh. they, they couldn't insulate it. Yeah, the wind was just like just 
brush, man. Would you what? stay here if you could? I don't really know much about the state or anything about what's going on in here, but like from what I see, it's. I mean, they say it's decent. Yeah. Like I said it's a lot better than going anywhere else. Yeah, that's generally the word. Is if if, if you hear it's not as bad as other places, that means it's pretty good. Yeah. So like I'm just just hoping and praying that I can help people here and they just keep me around, maybe they'll make me like a personal care worker or something. Help other inmates, mentor them, because I guess they have a couple guys that are serving a life sentence that have turned into personal care workers or counselors. Could help other guys when they come in. When I can do that. Hmm. They don't have like the normal programs you would have, but you know, it's not for me. Mm-hmm. Like some guys like try to, they want to get like extra degrees and stuff like that. They don't have that here. You have to go to one of the other places. Mm. So if you just said, I want, a, you know, do some more education stuff, would you get moved to another place? Or is it totally up to them whether you can do totally that? It's totally up to them. Because, yeah, like, I'm not sure how that gets paid for. Right. So, like, I'll just, whatever they want me to do, that's what I'm going to do. If they want to move back to Colorado, I'll be like, why? <laughs> why do I have to move back to Colorado? <laughs> Oh, if they told you yeah. that, you would question that? Oh, well, like, a- after a while, if I was here for a long time, and then say, okay, since you leveled down, we'll move you back. I'm like, like, what? <laughs> but, um, know how that would go. Are you scared to level down, though? No, I mean, it'd it take, it take years for that to happen, but, like, I don't know. I don't know how it would be like in Colorado in the DOC there. PSU counselor, she worked in DOC in Colorado and California. She said Colorado looks like California now. Really? She says, she says bad off of getting violence. Mm-hmm. I can see that. Yeah, I can see. Changing. Yeah, I think people in this part of the country are just different overall. It's really, you know, it's, we were kind of talking about that earlier. Colorado's not like it used to be. People here just seem to be nice. Regardless. I think a lot of transplants probably moving into Colorado from other states. Yeah. Probably affecting that. Because, no, Dave Colon, he said they were moving to Florida just to get away from Colorado because it's too much changed. Yeah. It's just so expensive. And yeah. Everything's just crazy. Mm-hmm. Houses. Just keep going up and up for any kind of like a half an acre of land you're just gonna pay the same amount of money. Here I think it's a lot cheaper, but the pay is a lot it's much lower I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I was doing a little reading on the area and the median house price up here is like hundred and sixteen thousand. I mean you can't even buy a mailbox and call out for that. No. <laughs> no. Like a PO box That's right true. there. Yeah. <laughs> I want a P.O. box in Colorado, 100 grand. I think I was reading like Pittsburgh, kind of like the same way. It's like, what, like it's crazy to think about how much it varies from like state to state, city to city. Pittsburgh expensive? No, like. Oh, oh inexpensive? Yeah, it's like oh, yeah. 100, 150,000 for a house. Yeah, I'm like, jeez. Like, but, you know, deal with the weather and deal with all that kind of stuff, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, there's a reason for that, right? Mm-hmm. Like here, I guess you got like April to September. That's your only good months here. The rest of the time you're in your house. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I could handle that. Especially if snowmobiles. I wouldn't even yeah. like that. Yeah. You can't still do that every day, right? You start using the snowmobile for necessity, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. right. to, to get to the store. <laughs> you have the license plate on a daily snowmobile. commuter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a mean. problem. Kind of walk around Titletown all the time. Mm-hmm. Are they coming or? Yeah, they just did. They just literally walked away with another person. Oh, they did. They gotta get to the end of the wherever and come back. Mm. This place is huge. It's, big. it's a long hallway. So, how far is your pod or wherever you're staying from here? All the way down that side. All the other way. Yeah. I think this is like the west side of the building here. Mm. I haven't gone much farther than this. Like, all my stuff's always on the east side. But they got, like, they got huge, like, pods. They'll have, like, a hundred, over a hundred guys in them. So, but they move, like, 40 or 50 people out each day. You have a cellmate, right? Is that what no. you said? Oh, you don't have a cellmate? Nope. 
I'm gonna go to the GPU and buy a little. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long. Most of the cells in my unit are single cells. There's like three that have doubled up, but there's they don't have the overcrowding they have. That mm -hmm. issue they had when I first got here. That's what she was saying. There was a, like 400 extra inmates. Yeah. But they ended up shipping out to different places. So yeah, I, didn't, I never knew what the what the assessment part of it was as far as like how, how many people they had coming in and out. But it was like a yeah, people coming in and out everywhere. Mm -hmm. So is it like a general supervision type thing, like Will County is? Where you get a, have like a big room pods on the top or how is that no it's like you have a sergeant desk at the front of it and then a hallway of like 20 cells uh, okay. and they just kind of walk back and forth it's the rdc was like you have like like a cul-de-sac of cells three tiers and then like the the perch for the sergeant right here you can see in everybody's cell just from looking around right okay. but this one's like they got to walk up and down this used to be like a mental hospital or something they said oh. like back in the day okay it's definitely old. You, you can you can hear those pipes like vibrating around the walls, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh god, don't bust. <laughs> Is it like exceptionally freezing in here? Just like cold in the last window. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it gets. Whew. Depending on which way the wind's blowing, depends on which side. But it gets cold. Oh, yeah. It gets in. It gets it gets cold. It's pretty chilly. There was like a six foot snow drift outside my window for a little while. It's Finally starting to go down. So when it was like negative 50. 